Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to look at how to set our particles on a skeletal mesh that has animation. So I'm going to create a new emitter and we'll just use the fountain template because why not? And we'll call that skeletal mesh. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new system and we're going to add that emitter I just created, even though it's not much yet, it will be and we'll call that skeletal mesh as well. All right, so let's go in here. First thing, we're using the spawn rate for the fountain, but for a skeletal mesh, I'm really gonna want burst instantaneous. That's gonna give me a lot of particles to work with all at once. And I don't need this or this, and I'm not gonna need any of this. Okay, cool. So in our particle spawn, I'm gonna look for initialize mesh reproduction sprite. I already went ahead and brought in an avatar with some animation in it. So I'm gonna use that avatar. Cool. And then in update, I'm gonna look for, oh, I'm gonna look for update mesh reproduction sprite. And I'm gonna set it to the same avatar. And now, I have, look at that, I have an avatar filled with particles. And we could do a color, I don't know, maybe like a nice pink. Yeah, that's fun. Add that. All right, so this looks pretty good. And I'm gonna just tweak one thing. I'm gonna make the loop duration a bit longer and I'm gonna have a uniform lifetime that reflects the loop duration. So it's just a more consistent feel. Okay. So let's go into our system. Now, eventually we're going to want some animation on this. We don't want it just stuck in a T pose. Now to do this, we're going to need to add the source. Now the source can only come from something in the world outliner. So I really need to be able to access this variable at, in the details panel in the level. To do that, I'm going to make an exposed variable for our skeletal mesh. And I'm gonna tie that to the two places where we have a skeletal mesh, in update and in initialize. Great. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring that into our level. And then I'm also going to bring in my animation file. Mm, there we go. So in my animation file, I need to do two things. One, I'm going to make it invisible because I don't need to see the actual character. We're going to put a bunch of particles on it so we can just hide the animation itself. And the other thing is I need to always tick pose and refresh bones. And refreshing the bones is what the particle is going to use every time the update mesh reproduction sprite is called. So going back to my particle system here, I now have this new section in my details panel called override parameters. And there is the SK mesh variable that I created. I'm going to assign my avatar. And now for source, I can assign the animation. Now watch this. There we go. Now I have my particles on my avatar in the scene. And if I hit play, there we go. I have my moving avatar filled with 10,000 particles. Pretty cool. A few things to note here. This particular avatar has a very high poly count for the eyes, which is why they're glowing and kind of freaky. The hair has a very high poly count. The sneakers have a very high poly count, the shorts. So things you're thinking of, if you're going to be using an avatar explicitly for particles, I recommend just not having eyes at all. Um, you won't notice if you're using particles. And just to be mindful with material choices, you want something that's lower poly count or at least 
a more uniform poly count throughout the body of the avatar. If you don't want like very obvious sneakers or very obvious shorts or hair or things like that. So things to think about, but I hope you give this a shot, try it out. And then the next video, we will be adding some forces to this animation.